If you're looking for some potential gems this next bull market, then you gotta check out all the polka dot pair chains out there. Why? Well, because they're super under the radar and they're the bread and butter of the Polkadot ecosystem. Remember, Polkadot is a layer zero blockchain, so it by itself does not have any dApps that you could use, but it does have a bunch of layer one parachains that do have dApps that you can use. So you don't only have to see these parachains as projects to potentially invest in, you can also go check them out and use them for their particular use cases. That's why in this video, I wanna spotlight a few special parachains that should be on your radar. And just FYI, this video was made possible by a Polkadot Treasury grant. Anyways, let's start with one that has an amazing name, Moon Sama. Now this project is all about NFTs. It's an NFT infrastructure project that makes it easy to build and deploy collections on multiple different chains. And it does so with this architecture, or stack per se. At the very bottom is their parachain, aka the Moon Sama network. Its purpose is to host all the products and services they offer. For example, Two tools they have are their Multiverse Portal and Moon Sama Composer. The Composer lets you quickly create NFT collections just the way you like it. And the Portal lets you create a broader ecosystem around your collection with things like token whitelisting, rewards distribution, etc. Those are just two of the many tools that they plan to offer. But on top of those are some existing apps that showcase the power of Moon Sama. I'm not gonna go too deep here, but they have their own metaverse, their own NFT marketplace, and a wildlife initiative that's quite unique. They also have an upcoming arcade game that looks like a cyberpunk style Mortal Kombat, so that's pretty cool to see. But yeah, as you can see, the Moon Sama ecosystem is already quite robust, and all of it is pirated by their Sama token. Sama is actually packed with a ton of utility. You need it to pay for goods and services on their network, to stake for validator sets, to gain access to events, and to participate in governance. One thing that I really like about Sama is that it was a fair launch and most of it is held by the community so we don't have to worry about shadowy insiders dumping on us. So all that's to say that Moon Sama plays an important role in the Polkadot ecosystem as a driver of all things NFTs. So if you're bullish on NFTs as a sector, then Moon Sama could be the parachain for you. Now, this next parachain targets a whole different vertical. It's called Kilt Protocol, and its focus is decentralized identity. Kilt is actually an OG project founded back in 2018, but that doesn't mean it's less important than these newer, hotter projects, because identity is a crucial part of any blockchain ecosystem. So Kilt actually helps both consumers and enterprises with their identity needs. For consumers, they let us take control of our digital identity. Like we can generate our own decentralized ID or DID and control access to our personal data in a way that's never before been possible. Just think about it. One identity that you can bring with you across all Polkadot parachains. Wouldn't that be amazing? Anyways, as for enterprises, they can issue secure blockchain credentials for transparency and security. This is super crucial because arguably, it's a lack of secure identity solutions that has kept billions of dollars of potential investments from flowing into the crypto space. So if Kilt succeeds in its mission, then it'll bring a ton of new capital to our industry and could even capture some of that value. Now here's the thing, Kilt's value isn't only hypothetical. There's already several projects using their products and services. Just to name a few, there's Sporn Wallet for generating your DID, Social KYC for proving control of your email address and DID sign for signing files in a way that's tamper proof. On the enterprise side, they have a huge partnership with Deloitte to issue reusable digital credentials on Kilt that support various KYC processes. For example, recently that was tapped by a giant shipping company to run their Know Your Client and Know Your Cargo system. So any way you slice it, Kilt's existing adoption is impressive. But hold up, because one key component of Kilt that I have yet to mention is their Kilt coin. I won't go too deep here, but it's used for paying fees, for incentivizing various parts of their ecosystem, for paying for their identity services, for staking, and for governance. So it's jam-packed with utility, and you can kind of see how Kilt provides a critical service, not only to Polkadot parachains, but also to crypto projects and just regular businesses as a whole. Anyways, on to our next parachain, 
And once again, we're moving verticals, this time to decentralized computing. The name of the project is Fala Network, and they aim to be the Web3 version of AWS or Google Cloud. So they do cloud computing, right? But in a decentralized manner. And this is actually super important and underappreciated because in the blockchain space, the majority of blockchain validators rely on centralized services like AWS. So their network uptime is at the mercy of these providers. Like if there's a widespread AWS outage and your blockchain's nodes are all on there, then your blockchain is gonna face an unacceptable downtime. Anyways, Fala solves that problem by creating a distributed network of computing resources. But what makes them really special is that they're permissionless to use, privacy focused, and they're great for developers. So all of that makes Fala a great place to host dApps, like games or metaverses, or you can use it to render NFTs and do other compute intensive activities, or you can even deploy your decentralized exchanges on there to ensure privacy and prevent front running. So Fala is great for all sorts of use cases. And a key part of that is their special FAT contracts. This is their reimagined version of a smart contract. But FAT contracts have additional functionalities like complex computation, low latency, and low cost. Another big difference is that smart contracts are executed on the blockchain, but FAT contracts are executed off-chain in a trusted execution environment to provide an extra layer of security and privacy. So yeah, that is super powerful. But another key part of Fala is their PHA token. You need that to pay for transactions or to be a miner slash gatekeeper on their network. And one thing I really like about it is that they never did an ICO for it. It was only distributed through a private sale and mining emissions. So yeah, Fala is incredibly useful and it plays a key role in the Polkadot ecosystem with their distributed computing resources that any dApp or parachain could use. Now, so far we've covered a parachain for NFTs, a parachain for identity, and a parachain for computing. But next, we've got a parachain focused on decentralized storage. You see, I'm giving you a diverse set of projects to check out. Anyways, this project is called Crust, and it's essentially a storage platform built on IPFS. But it really goes beyond just simple IPFS by adding decentralized storage markets, smart contracts, and cross-chain capabilities on top of it. So if you think about it, Crust essentially adds an incentives layer on top of IPFS, and that allows it to host all sorts of things like dApps, NFT metadata, and encrypted IPFS files. Crust is also secure with end-to-end -end encryption, and it's censorship resistant due to its distributed network of storage providers. So it can really host and store anything. Plus it's built on Polkadot Substrate, so it can do those things in a fast and cheap manner. Now, a key part to making this whole system work is their Crust token or CRU. It's used for transaction fees, governance, staking, and purchasing storage from providers. So it's a crucial piece of this project, which is offering a critical service to the Polkadot ecosystem and beyond. Anyways, this next pair chain is by far the biggest one on my list, and it's none other than Astar Network, aka Japan's leading blockchain. So this is a big one in the world of interoperability because they support both EVM and WebAssembly, so they have far reach with their multi-chain capabilities. But I think what's most impressive about them is the amount of adoption they've gotten so far. Astar already has a bunch of dApps in their ecosystem. They also have a lot of big name partnerships under the belt, like they're working with Sony to build a new chain using the Astar stack, and they partnered with Toyota on a hackathon earlier this year as well. They were even selected by the Bank of Japan to collaborate on their CBDC proof of concept. So that's all super impressive, but what I'm even more excited about is what's coming next. For example, they have a ZK EVM testnet live right now, with the mainnet set to launch early next year. And they also have their Astar Tokenomics 2.0 coming soon, which is gonna be amazing for their ASTR token. It's gonna reduce inflation, add dynamic rewards, align their fees, and it's gonna greatly boost their dApp staking model. Speaking of dApp staking, that's an innovative part of the system that I'm a huge fan of. Basically through their build to earn program, developers can earn money by getting a cut of the block rewards when people nominate them. So Astar treats builders as first class citizens, and I think that will pay massive dividends for them in the future. Anyways, that was a lot of parachains, wasn't it? There's actually a lot more, but I wanted to give you a diverse selection of them to check out. And like I said, a lot of them you can already go use and try out. So go do that by using my links in the description. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see my next Polkadot video, which will be all about its upcoming catalysts in 2024.